David Smith and this is Valley Mole, the show that digs in and around Silicon Valley, searching for insights into technology news stories, the patent wars, and the business of startups. Apple has requested clarification from the Telecommunication Standards Institute of Europe on FRAND licensing terms. Now, Motorola which is just in the process of being acquired by Google, has demanded 2.25% licensing royalty from Apple on Apple's sale of iPhones. Samsung has requested 2.4% from Apple on every patent, on each of Samsung's patents. And this is too rich even for a company with a lot of money like Apple. Because Apple is forced to infringe these patents. The patents at issue are essential to the industry standards that have been adopted by all the manufacturers to ensure that the Apple phone works and talks to the Motorola phone. And that speaks to the Samsung phone. So to ensure that these phones speak to each other we have to set industry standards. And when the industry standards are set, certain patents that are necessary to implementing the standard, they're considered essential. And they, under the terms of the standards bodies, have to be licensed to members of the uh, standards body on a FRAND basis. They have to be licensed in a way that is fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory. Now, the meaning of fair is not really at dispute too much here. Basically, what it means is the patents are made available to all the cell phone manufacturers. It means the patents cannot be bundled together with unessential patents. They can't be attached to a free grant back to the licensor the patents are available individually and they're available to all the uh, members on a fair basis. Now, what is reasonable? Reasonable is one of these words that you hear a lot in law school. A lot of the rules and regulations are based on what is reasonable and in many cases it's a punt. Essentially, when you dig down, basically they say, well, what's reasonable is what is not unreasonable. In some uh, legal areas, the word reasonable has been well defined. And this is really where the problem lies. And this is what Apple is asking uh, Etsy to, uh, to resolve here. Non-discriminatory, uh, the other component of FRAND basically means there's a level playing field for all the competitors. Now, this doesn't mean that there's a single price set for each patent. What it means is that a company like Samsung, for example, can set a scaled pricing based on volume and have a, a company that's involved in higher volumes paying a lower or different price to somebody that's shipping lower volumes. But what it means is Samsung cannot force Apple to pay more than it would force another company to pay with similar volumes. So, what was Apple's request to Etsy? Firstly, they're looking for an appropriate royalty rate. A rate that's relative to all the essential patents in the standard. So let's say there are a thousand patents declared essential and you own one of them. You can't really claim that your one patent out of a thousand is going to be worth a royalty of 2%. If you had 20 patents, you may claim that 2% uh, of a thousand is 20 patents, so you may be able to claim some of that. So basically Apple's saying, let's look at the total pool of patents that are declared essential before we decide what each one of them might be worth, and let's have the ratio, the value and the, of that particular patent considered pro rata to the total pool. The second thing that Ac Apple's looking for is a common royalty rate based on an industry standard sales price 
not a specific product price like the iPhone. So for example, if the iPhone is selling for $800 and the average price of a cell phone is $200, what Apple's saying is charge me the royalty rate based on the $200 average industry price, not on the $800 I'm able to charge because I've added all these extra features over and above the standard communications capabilities. So Apple's asking for a common royalty rate based on an industry standard sales price. And the other thing Apple's looking for is a rule that prevents the patent holder from requesting an injunction. Basically, what Apple's saying here is that we're prepared, let's, let's focus these discussions on paying a reasonable royalty. If you're going to go to court and request a reasonable royalty from me, then you should not be able to ask the court to block my sales of iPhone in a particular country or a particular jurisdiction. Let's take injunctions off the table and leave this as a discussion for damages and royalties. Now, as with all these patent war situations in the smartphone business, billions of dollars are at stake. The royalties on the Apple iPhone, if you take the iPhone and the iPad, you're looking at something like $150 billion in sales uh, this year. And 1% of that is obviously $1.5 billion. So billions of dollars are at stake with these patent uh, licensing issues. On the other side, Google is just in the process of closing the acquisition of Motorola well, they're buying primarily for the Motorola patents and Google's paying $12.5 billion in cash for those patents. So Google are, is not likely to give those patents away and they're going to look to extract royalties from those patent licensing initiatives. So the standards bodies are, as well as the courts, are becoming powerful in the patent wars. The letter from Apple was to the standards body requesting clarification on what the meaning of FRAND is when it comes to licensing patents. Now, all weapons of litigation today, clearly even FRAND patents that are intended to be shared fairly are being called on by adversaries as these patent wars in the smartphone business Heat up. We'd like to thank the sponsors of Valley Mole. Tynex, the full service patent broker operating the world's largest patents and technology trading exchange. SVBS Silicon Valley Business School, delivering online courses in entrepreneurship, technology commercialization, patents, and high tech law. ValueMyPatent.com the only place to go for rapid, realistic patent appraisals. And unlockvc.com, helping entrepreneurs find investors and all the key knowledge they need to successfully raise finance for a startup venture.